Here's a rather large, I'll call it a boom box, from General Electric, unknown year, maybe 1991 or 2001. It um, has a couple of detachable speakers. And before we go too far, I want to crack open one of those speakers and look inside because there's some type of thingamajigger there that I don't know if it's cosmetic or has a function to it, along with what looks to be a four inch woofer, we'll call it, and a tweeter. So let's stop for a minute and look inside one of these speakers and see what's going on in there. They appear to be ported, but I don't know if that's real or not. So I've opened the speaker, the left one, to see. I was curious about that little embellishment on the front to the um, right of the tweeter to see if that was functional or not. But as you can see, there's the tweeter and there's the space for that little um, embellishment or pattern is and there's no electronics there so not functional just aesthetic cover up some of the blank space on the speaker I suppose so we're looking there that's the front plastic part of the speaker so that's Rev 4 let's turn the speaker around and look at it the other way so looking at the speaker like this here's the back part of the speaker information and this one appears to be a Rev 5 so the back's slightly different than the front let's see if we can see what's on our woofer here Three watts. And there you can see the port, base reflex port. So that's the general part of the speaker, and I guess that embellishment is just an embellishment, not functional. All right, here's how the speakers clip on. You can see the little clip down here. This is actually kind of hard to do. Yeah, you heard it clip in. We're going to leave it like this for the duration of the video because we don't have a good place to separate the speakers, which do separate uh, about a seven and a half inch wire on each one. So. In your real life, you could get this to about 15 feet. This may be on your bookshelf, and the speaker's about 15 feet apart. All right, taking a look around the front of the main part of the unit, we have our GE, FM, AM, and our dial scale. And you'll notice the AM goes up to 1700 at least, so that's the extended AM band, which would, was started in 1993. So that's some sort of a date sequence there. Um, tuning dial, volume dial, band mode, FM, mono or stereo, and AM. Balance slider and our three band graphic equalizer. 100 kilohertz, 1000 kilohertz, and 10,000 kilohertz. We have our bass boost on or off. We have a dubbing control high speed, normal, or off. And the dubbing control has a little sequence here. Um, sort of a memory thing here for you. One, get that down there. Two, turn that on high. Three, goes down here to pause. Four and four, record and play. And five, play. So it gives you a little sort of pictogram help there on how to dub. Then we have our power Tape radio is off, setting for CD or aux in on the back, and then the radio is on. We have our two cassette wells, A and B. This one's 
strictly for playing and if you want to record something or dub you put the blank tape in this side in deck A. Down here we have a little headphone jack. Here's our record and play, rewind, fast forward, stop, eject and pause. It's a little hard to see but there is a little trimmer spot down here above the rewind. Um, that's for the head and over here we have play, rewind, fast forward, stop, eject and pause and there are actually two trimmer spots here rewind and fast forward I suppose one's for alignment one's for azimuth and this shows how you gotta put the tape in down let's see I'm sure I'm probably missing something but uh, let's see if we can the doors open notoriously slow let's see if there's a way to get a look down in there See what we can see, if anything. There we go. Well, let's look around back. All right, looking around back, you can see we have our handle our FM antenna, we have our aux input jacks which also on the front are identified as CD we have a small microphone input we have a beat cancel switch for if you're recording AM and you get that strange beat you can try a different setting A or B we have compression fittings for our speaker wires um, they really couldn't have used phono plugs on this if they were going to attach them because they wouldn't know how long they needed to be for each setting. They wouldn't know where people were going to put them. Let's see what else we have. We have, you can see back here, the release switches for the speakers. We have our battery compartment, which uses six D cells. When I got this, there were six D cells uh, working dated March 2015 so this was used pretty recently I don't know if you'll be able to see this really good but there is our speaker wire there are our date code 5138C so that one indicates the year of the decade so this could be 91, except that doesn't match the extended AM band, which didn't start until 2003, I mean, excuse me, 1993. Or it could be 2001, but that seems a little late for a double cassette deck and no integral CD player. But I don't know, so that would probably have to be 2001 if you go by the extended AM band. And then, of course, we have our power cord, which comes out through the back battery door. Okay, and finally, for the back, for our setting, um, like I said, you could get these speakers like 15 feet apart for your living area. But we're going to connect ours today for this video. And we have our red positive and red and black negative wires going in that helps you identify to keep your audio in phase all right for our first cassette recording test we'll try just a uh, microphone test got the uh, controls to tape dubbing off there's no controls for recording levels, so... I guess the uh, microphone's about a foot away from my mouth. We'll see what the audio levels sound like on that. And this is the recording test of the unknown year, maybe 2001, General Electric 3-5677A boombox. I guess you could call it a boombox. 
portable dust cassettes, AM FM radio by any definition I guess that's a boom box um, although I more like the traditional boom boxes but we'll see what this recording sounds like sound like from that and this is the recording test of the unknown year maybe 2001 General Electric 3-5677A boombox I guess you could call it a boombox it's portable dust cassettes AM FM radio by any definition I guess that's a boombox um, although I more like the traditional boomboxes but we'll see what this recording sounds like. All right, well, didn't sound great, but serviceable, I guess, in an emergency for voice. I did notice that it sounded better when I adjusted the equalizer. Made it sound a little higher, a little less boomy. Come to think of it, why don't we try it with the Base boost off. Come on, stop, stop, stop by yourself. Didn't do auto stop. So, base boost off for voice. Let's try that. The microphone's about a foot away from my mouth. We'll see what the audio levels sound like from that. And this is the recording test of the unknown year, maybe 2001. General Electric 3-5677A boombox. I guess you could call it a boombox. Okay, note to self. When doing re playback a voice recording, turn off bass boost. I think we'll test recording off the radio. And we'll also test our dubbing high and normal and what time it is. So I've got a 60 minute cassette in. I'm actually just going to record the radio for 60 minutes, 30 minutes on one side, then 30 minutes on the other. Then we'll try a dubbing test. Um, and we'll see on half the tape we'll do high speed. The other half of the 60 minute tape we'll dub at normal speed and we'll listen to the audio quality of high speed versus normal dubbing and we'll see the speed difference between high speed and normal dubbing. Of course I won't videotape all this but we'll just start it here. What's on the radio? And breaking up has never been easier. Meet my Biore Deep Cleansing Charcoal Pore Strip. This strip with natural charcoal will instantly plug out a week's worth of gunk in just 10 minutes. So, we'll just set this and let it run. I'll try to remember to come back uh, and switch sides of this tape to get a 60 minute radio tape. All right, that's uh, finishing up the second 30 minute side of recording off the radio. So let's set up to dub. These uh, door opening mechanisms sure are slow on this thing. I know some people say that's a sign of good quality, but sometimes it's just irritating. All right. Looks like I recorded the B side first. So we'll put that in our play deck. We have a uh, new 60 minute cassette for our record deck. We're going to dub the first one at normal speed, the first 30 minutes, and the second 30 minutes at high speed, and see if we can tell any quality difference. So, one tape player, two, I'm going to go to normal and not high, three, pause, 
board in play is four and five for play. It's you. And now I'm skipping. I'll turn that down and so 30 minutes from now we should come back and this should be done. I didn't press the start button for a bit, so. Oops, and there goes our recording one. Well, let's set up again for high speed dubbing. We'll, uh, eject. Come on, come on. Things are frustratingly slow. All right, one. Now we'll go to high. Two. Pause. Three. Record and play. And play. So it should be 15 minutes. We'll come back. All right. There goes our play. 15 minutes. Dubbing should end up just after that. Okay. Let's um, hear what. normal speed dubbing mm. I figured out this was mostly an old Casey Kasem top 40 it's you and now I'm stepping with Biore Biore free your I've noticed on other tests that this my number two does not look like the set doesn't sound good the first few seconds is there a number three? Uh, table for four, please. Then it perks up. EPI.com. Brought to you by Epi. Hey, Central Indiana. Are you ready to pick your D? Maybe we can find some music if we're lucky. Guitarist Neil Schoen and bass player Randy Jackson. Michael Bolton journeys up four notches to number 13 with Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. The poor excuse for Otis Redding song. I'm just not a big Michael Bolton fan. I know a lot of people like him, but I really can't say I do. So once again, we're listening to a tape dubbed from an original radio recording onto another cassette at normal speed. Over the radio. We have a little uh, problem with radio reception, maybe. Let me fast forward to the end of this and we'll switch to the high speed side. Well, I don't really have to fast forward to the end, do I? I'll just uh, take it out and switch here. So this is that high speed dubbing. Bro now falls to number six as the countdown rolls on. There you are. I've got great news. So far it sounded okay. 
the ante so you can drive a 2018 Chevy Silverado for... Come to L.A. Now, six years later, 23-year-old Richard Marks has his third top 40 hit. Think Lionel knew something? Here's Endless Summer Nights. Face boost. Off on. Well, it didn't sound too bad on high speed. I think it kind of sounded better than on normal speed, but that could have been a function of certain radio th things going on in the airwaves at the time I originally recorded it. But either way, I didn't notice a big difference, so I would probably always use high speed dubbing on this and play it back with bass boost. That's uh, the biggest thing. All right, we'll try recording from the CD aux inputs on the back. Hear what that sounds like. Record a few seconds of this. I guess I should press play, shouldn't I? Come back in a second and hear what that sounds like. All right, that should be enough for a test. Put that back down to tape. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, records from the aux inputs as it should. One thing I realize I haven't done yet is well, sometimes it auto stops and sometimes it doesn't. One thing I have not done yet is play a pre recorded cassette. As always with copyright, I can't do much here. Some group called New England. Nineteen Don't know much about them. Just a box of cassettes I picked up at a estate sale a while back. Oh, 
that's a uh, pre-recorded cassette. All right, let's do a little band scan here. We'll start on FM. I heard that you Money. About tomorrow. We do have a little the FM stereo light that comes on admission. when appropriate. Oh. And I might not also mention that we have an overall power light down there. Minus Isaac Haas. Everyone loves NCAA March Madness. You know why? Because it's also time for the crisis power you saw a young man who was plowing. And he took off his mantle and he just... That Latino station is normally the highest one I get on my dial. So anything after this is the extended AM band. stragglers there of some sort. This game has been pretty much a two possession game for the most part. Okay, well, anyway, that's from work. Okay, that's, I think, everything. I might have forgotten something to demonstrate, but maybe not. So you've been looking at a video about the General Electric 3-5677A, we'll call it a boombox, from maybe 2001. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't, please subscribe for more videos about old consumer electronics.